Recently, I finished my first ever playthrough of Metal Gear Solid, and it has completely changed the way I look at older games, especially since I didn't start gaming till I was in my late 20s. Metal Gear Solid opened my eyes to the fact that games should be more about the experience as a whole rather than just fast action gameplay and cutting edge graphics. You can get my full thoughts on the experience of the first Metal Gear Solid in my original video linked in the description. So to follow up that amazing experience I decided to immediately jump into the sequel which my chat was telling me was even better than the original and since I like a good challenge I decided to play it on hard mode for my first go around the opening scene of Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty is a cinematic masterpiece that set the tone and had made me even more hyped for an intricate plot and more advanced stealth mechanics the game begins with Solid Snake discussing the era of nuclear weapons and the emergence of Metal Gear technology, which is a bipedal tank capable of launching nuclear missiles, which kind of gives you a quick overview of the stakes at play in this game. It is rainy night at the George Washington Bridge in New York City, Snake wearing his signature stealth suit, a long coat, and looking like a certified badass is seen walking on the bridge. He uses a grappling hook to jump and swing off the bridge and parachute onto the deck of the USS Discovery. On the tanker, Snake removes his wet coat revealing his sneaking suit. He then activates his stealth camo and at this point I am 100% locked in. The generational leap in graphics from the PS1 to the PS2 was pretty shocking already at this point. Although the graphics of Metal Gear Solid 1 did not bother me because the gameplay and story were so great, I still can't help noticing the difference. Snake finds himself teamed up again with an old friend on the mission, the one and only Otacon, which I am pumped at this point to find out the Otacon is in this game. He is the goat of helping us get out of pickles. Through codec conversations, Snake communicates with Otacon who provides mission support and information, which I did not use as much as I should have. It could have saved me some time and headaches. Lesson learned. Our primary objective is to locate and photograph the new Metal Gear, codenamed Metal Gear Ray, and to expose its existence to the world. As Snake infiltrates deeper into the ship, he encounters Russian soldiers hinting at a larger conspiracy and the presence of other hostile forces interested in the new Metal Gear. By this time, after playing Metal Gear Solid 1 and going right into Metal Gear Solid 2, I love the controls. I wish more developers would go out of their comfort zone and try to push us players to our limits. Some of the things I love about the controls are the intuitive stealth mechanics. The game implements stealth mechanics smoothly into the control scheme. Actions like peeking around corners, hanging from ledges, and using first person view to aim and shoot are easy to execute, enhancing the stealth experience. Also, the context sensitive actions. The control scheme uses context sensitive actions that change depending on the situation. For example, the same button can be used for different actions such as interrogating a guard or holding up an enemy based on your position and the context. Weapon and item management. The quick access to weapons and items via the shoulder buttons allows for efficient inventory management. You can switch between different gadgets and weapons without pausing the game, maintaining immersion and flow. When we reached the ship's forecastle, I encountered Olga Gorklovich, the daughter of Sergei Gorklovich, who is leading the group of Russian soldiers that have taken over the tanker, who we end up in a standoff with, and with her looking supremely confident, wielding her USP, I don't get the impression she is going to stand down. Olga uses uses the environment to her advantage in this boss fight, taking cover behind crates and occasionally moving to different positions, which really pisses me off. I cannot get a shot off on her. I'm way too slow. On top of that, she uses huge lights to blind me and a tarp to obscure my vision. I'm finally able to find a few spots where she cannot see me and I'm able to finally also be able to land some of those shots. She's just such a good shot, dude. I, she's such a good, it's, it's too quick. It's too quick. She shoots way too quick. I can't like, dude, I don't, I don't take down much of her health at all, dude. Holy shit. Why does it put my gun away, dude? It puts my fucking gun away, man. Why does it put my gun away? When I get hit, it puts my gun away. See, how does she get me, brother? There we go, Olga. How you doing there, Olga? How you doing there, Olga? How you doing there, mm. Huh? Ha ha ha! Olga! Ha 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 ha! I can play!
play this game. Both of us can play this game. Boom! She's feeling a little woozy. Thank you guys all for the tips. There we go, defeated Olga. To beat her, you need to be patient. Using cover effectively and timing shots when Olga exposes herself are key to winning the fight. After a few tries, her movements become predictable and then it's game over for her. After the fight is over, we acquire Olga's USP, which is essential for disabling security cameras and other threats quietly. Our next steps are to continue to infiltrate the ship and gather data. I need, I need, the, other, I need the other gun, dude. I need to blast these guys, man. One more, one more guy, one more guy. We got it! Oh, no, 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 no! What the? The f- okay. We navigate through the tanker's interior, avoiding guards and security systems, and reach the engine room. The, the rooms look the same. Keep going, too eager. <laughs> no worries, dude. I got only got five minutes. Oh, shit, I better get going, huh? How do they not see me? <laughs> what the f is going on, dude? Woo! Hoo, hoo, hoo. We eventually make it to where Metal Gear Ray is being held and have to try and sneak past rooms filled with soldiers as they listen to a speech given by their leader. Oh, shit. Ah, man, does that mean I gotta do this all over again? This is good. Cool. Oh shit, there's a guy right there. When I make it to the final room, there was this one guard that had my number. No matter what I did, he saw me. After a lot of trial and error, I managed to get past him, get all the pictures that was needed, and upload them. The Commandant is almost done with his speech. We're just about out of time. Hurry! Ah, okay. Then, out of nowhere, like a fart in the wind, that asshole Ocelot shows up, which I actually really like his character, just don't tell him that. Ocelot betrays Sergei, shooting him and the other mercenaries, and then Ocelot reveals that he has been working for the Patriots and plans to take Metal Gear Ray for them. And then, the man himself, Liquid Snake, shows up. What the hell is going on? on. Well, it turns out that after Liquid died, Ocelot had Liquid's arm grafted onto him to replace the one he lost previously in Metal Gear Solid 1, and since doing so, he has begun to have episodes where Liquid's consciousness takes over his arm. Snake! What the hell is that? What the f- Is that not Ocelot? What the fuck is going on here? Is it liquid? No, dude, no, 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 no. What is this? <laughs> Disguised as Ocelot? What the hell's going on? Getting liquid's back, huh? He somehow survived. What the is going on dude i am so taken off guard by this this game literally already has me hooked kojima is a genius when this happens during the mission liquid ends up taking control of metal gear ray and uses it to attack the tanker causing it to sink a cutscene then plays showing snake struggling to gather more evidence and escape but with metal gear wrecking the place we end up getting left in the dark on whether or not he was able to escape News reports frame Snake responsible for the tanker disaster and he is presumed dead by the public. No way Snake is dead, right? If he is dead, I will not be playing Metal Gear Solid 3. Afterwards, we time skip forward to two years after the events of the tanker. However, we are now playing this guy named Raiden, whose real name is Jack. And he actually has a pretty complex backstory in the Metal Gear series, which I think is worth taking some time to talk about. Raiden was born in Liberia and became a child soldier during the Liberian Civil War. He was trained to kill from a very young age and was known as Jack the Ripper due to his combat prowess and brutality. Eventually, he was rescued by the US government and put into a rehabilitation program, which tried to put him back into society. However, it didn't really take completely. So instead, he joins the anti-terrorist group Foxhound and is given his code name. 
game. His first major mission is to infiltrate the Big Shell, an offshore cleanup facility taken over by a terrorist group called the Sons of Liberty, and save the hostages that have been taken, which just so happens to include the US president for some reason. I mean, why the hell was he here in the first place? Helping Raiden on the mission is Colonel Campbell and Raiden's girlfriend, Rose, which having your girlfriend with you on a top secret mission such as this seems like a soap opera waiting to happen. Raiden infiltrates the facility via a swimming insertion and makes his way to the Shell One core, where we eventually encounter Pliskin, a Navy SEAL who looks and sounds exactly like Snake. My name is... is my name is Pliskin. Pliskin. This is Snake, dude. That's Snake. No way that's Poliskin. Whatever, dude. But it's not Snake. But whatever. Whatever. We will just have to roll with it so we can team up and, and stop these terrorists. During which, we get ourselves into some hot water with one of the coolest bosses I have ever seen. Vamp. Who is exactly what you're thinking. A freaking vampire. What the hell is going on here? Anyways, Poliskin actually comes to our rescue just in the nick of time before Vamp can get rid of us. We soon after come across Peter Stillman, an explosives expert who informs us that the facility is rigged with bombs set by Fat Man, a member of the Sons of Liberty, which of course we then all work together as a team to locate and disarm them when we encounter Fortune. Uh oh. Oh gosh. Here we go. Ugh. Have fun. Who are you talking about? I have fun. Fortune seemingly has the power to deflect bullets, so I had to hide in cover while trying to figure out some way to defeat her. When suddenly the boss fight just randomly ends as an elevator door opens up, which I mean, I'll, I'll take a W whenever I can get it. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Maybe, maybe use a stun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to use a stun on her. Oh, the. F no! Oh shit. Fire. Ah! What's this? Gosh! Let me up! Dude, she's gonna blow the fucking shit out. What the fuck am I supposed to do, brother? Um. Which type of explosives is it? He didn't say. What the hell? What? Huh? Finally, we caught up with the Fat Man, though, and he turned out to actually be the first real tough boss fight of this game for me so far. Which is sad, because how the hell do you get beat by a Fat Man on rollerblades with explosives? That said, it is a pretty unique boss fight, and I may or may not have raged ju just a little bit. Where the hell is it at? Where the hell is it at? I couldn't, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it, dude. I don't know where this f shit's at. Ah! Holy shit. Yeah, okay. So, do I ever have a chance? Like, when am I supposed to try to shoot him? It seems like there's not much time to shoot him. Dude, how fun is Fat Man? I love this dude. Yeah, yeah, I'm, th this is it. What the hell? Uh, he said go in for the attack. What the hell did that guy mean going for the attack? Ugh! My four of them? Oh shit, I'm running out of life, dude. Come on! I'm almost out of bullets, though. It's a bad thing. Uh, 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 man, I started to get tired during that fight. <laughs> Four, dude? Come on, man. Give me a break, huh? Come on, give me a break. Give me a break, brother. With my, I only got 30 seconds. I don't know where that one is at. What? Come on, man. Yeah, I'm toast. What the hell? I'm, I'm bleeding still. Where's my gun? 
Oh, dude. Oh, okay. All right. Gosh, I can't freaking hit him. Oh, jeez, dude. Oh, jeez, I can't freaking hit him with the freaking spin kick. Oh, this is great. What the f*** am I doing? Oh, gosh. You must be the Monopoly guy. Oh, whoa, whoa, what's up? Where's the last one? Where's the last one? Where's it at? I can never find this one. Gosh! Get off his body! God damn it, dude. I can't fucking hit him, dude. This is bullshit. Oh, this guy's a pain in my ass. There we go. I hit him and he did knock him over. Okay, whatever. Ah, ah, party's over! Damn, he was annoying. It was so difficult to get a shot off on him. So after I defused the bombs, I decided I would just run around trying to find an opportunity to punch and kick him or just cartwheel right into him. After defeating him, we must disarm the final bomb that Fat Man has planted and I almost did not find the bomb. It was hidden underneath him. This game, man, this game. With him out of the way, we still have to find the location of the president and save him. However, the only lead we have is that some guy who has a pacemaker knows the location so we are given a device that can detect the sounds of a pacemaker so before long we are able to track him down and it doesn't take much to get him to give up the presence location and on our way to rescue him we run into this dude solidus snake who decides to take a shit in our cheerios and pick a fight with us in his fighter jet this ended up being way harder than fighting that chop in the first game. With this one, I just had to also be patient and look for windows where I could shoot rockets at him. The area has enough things in it that you can hide behind. The key really is just patience, but I tend to struggle with patience in boss fights. One thing that 100% helps is that you have Snake, I mean, <clears throat> Pliskin, throwing ammo and rations out to you during the fight from a helicopter as he flies around, giving you encouragement. We get past him, and really there was never any doubt in my mind that we could do it. Our name is Ryder. Raiden, man. Raiden. Freaking Raiden. Oh, jeez. He is panned. Okay, alright. Get up, get up. Okay. Dude. Yeah. No! No, 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 no. Oh, shit! Get up! Get up! Holy moly, dude. I like this view right here. Enough with the cutscenes, man. Just let me shoot the guy. Holy moly. Hey, uh, Snake, I could use some more help, dude. I could use some more help, Snake. Do you want to throw down on some rations? I didn't stand up, brother! Holy shit. Come on. Come on. Did that hit me from there? Come on. No, get up! Get up, brother! Holy shit, dude. Get up! Oh, shit! Holy hell, dude, what the f Where was the ration at that he threw? God damn, brother. Oh, shit. No, I don't want that. Burn, baby, burn. How do I get off fire? I'm on fire. What am I doing? Jesus. Holy shit, dude. He's not even a good shot. No, what? What? No way! What am I doing? I'm screwing it up! Holy shit, dude! What the fuck am I doing? What is he doing? Oh my gosh, I get stuck on fucking corners and shit. It pisses me off, man. There's no way. Alright, maybe now two more hits on him. No fly zone, baby! We find the location of the president, but of course, there is an electric floor in the way of us getting to him. I'm having flashbacks of Metal Gear Solid 1 at this point, where we have to use the Nikita rockets to disarm an electric floor. Same thing, right? To disarm the floor, this time we have to shoot rockets through freaking vents to be able to destroy the machine powering them. But at the same time, we have to make sure we don't hit the president. I may or may not have hit the president a couple times, but that's neither here nor there. What 
are you doing? Why did he run in the way? The he ran right in the way of the bomb. <laughs> he ran towards it. Well, he needs to get out of the way. Right. Stop it. Shit. When we finally reach the president, he tells us to find someone named Emma just before he ends up dying of a heart attack. Like, what the fuck is going on? These plot twists just keep making my head spin. Well, it turns out, here's another one, that Emma is actually Emma Emmerich, Otacon's stepsister, and that she is being held captive for vital information she has about the terrorist plan. Well, now it's time to go find Emma. On our way to locating Emma, we run into that fuck Vamp, man. Man, if I thought that man was a pain in my ass, this guy is the thorn. I no longer like him. Oh shit, what the fuck is that? Oh shit. Okay, alright, 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 alright. And he gets pissed. Oh, he gets pissed as shit. Where the fuck is he at, dude? No! Fell in the water. Oh shit, he get the shit out of me. Run! I can't move. What the fuck is this? Son of a bitch. Ah! <laughs> Come on! Come on! No! no! Damn it! I don't know if this is the best way. I don't know if this is the best way to beat him, but <laughs> it's the only way. This, this might be the slow way. I don't know if you'd want to do this on a speed run. Uh, he doesn't stop now. I can't. I'm gonna. This is gonna fucking piss me off, dude. This is gonna fucking piss me off. No, this isn't happening, Jack. You have to answer me. What am I doing? He's <laughs> this goddamn thing, man. Holy shit, dude. He moves like a fucking asshole. No, no, no. Some of the tricks he uses during the fight, like freezing you in place, are so annoying. I ended up going with a rocket strategy with him, and at every opportunity I got, when he was slow walking, I hit him in the face with the rocket. The last part of the fight, he just goes crazy, and so I hit in a corner and shot one of the Nikita rockets that you can fly at him. He never saw it coming. I'm gonna use this guy's strat. <laughs> <laughs> Vampire Slayer! <laughs> Let's go! But even after defeating him, he escapes. I guarantee I am going to meet up with him again. I see you, Kojima. I see you. We rescue Emma and escort her through the facility while dealing with the enemy soldiers and environmental hazards and learn that the big shell is actually a cover for Arsenal Gear, a massive submarine equipped with advanced weapons and AI that is being controlled by a group known as the Patriots, a secret organization that uses its powers to manipulate global events. Would you look at that? And on top of it, we learn that this entire situation was orchestrated by them in an attempt to create a new type of soldier aka us aka Raiden. We need to stop these dudes but first we need to continue to escort Emma so that she can reunite with her brother. Which this part might have been the hardest non-boss part of the game. We escort Emma across the oil fence on Strut L of the Big Shell facility. We guide her as she walks along a series of narrow walkways, protecting her from enemies and hazards and providing sniper support to clear her path. This was harder than it looked, especially on hard mode. After a few tries, I got the hang of it and memorized where the guards and the drones come out so that way I could anticipate where I needed to be watching. But at the end of escorting Emma, guess who shows up that I predicted? Vamp. He swoops in and is holding Emma hostage. See, I knew, I knew, I, I, 
I I knew something like this was gonna happen. But we quickly take him out. I mean, this is actually cakewalk compared to his actual fight earlier. All we need to do is hit him a few times with the sniper shots and he is donezo. We then end up getting captured and end up in our birthday suit being tortured. Like, what is up with these dudes, especially Ocelot, wanting to strip people naked and torture them all the time? We of course get out and escape, but have no clothes. We have to sneak by a bunch of guards while in our birthday suit and this whole whole time while we are trying to escape Colonel Campbell is tripping balls man and saying some weird shit and it turns out that he is some kind of AI robot who would have thought huh who would have thought we get past the guards and Pliskin is waiting for us and gives us all our gear before finally admitting he solid snake I knew it was there ever really any doubt though huh was there ever any doubt no there wasn't snake also gives us a katana I absolutely love Love this game now. Let's go. How does this game know me so well? And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Jack the Ripper is back. We team up with Snake, and like the two badasses we are, we fight through a hallway and room full of guards. Easy peasy. We then split up from Snake and are face to face with a shit ton of Metal Gear Rays. And guess what? what in hard mode we need to defeat 12 of them oh fuck me yeah this fight had me fuming no i was oh dang man oh god okay that's not good no get out of there what the hell i'm locked in guys i'm locked in i hope i hate the laser dude i can't dodge that man i don't know how to dodge those ones holy shit the ones that come out of the knee man I just could not find that happy range where the rays did not shoot those lock-on rockets at me. But after a little trial and error, I got into a rhythm to where I would just try and focus on one of the rays at a time. I had to defeat 12 of them, remember? But there are only three of them in the boss arena at a time. So I just focused on one and learned that if I shot it in the leg, it would become stunned and then I could get a big damage hit on the head. So I just did this over and over. Rinse and repeat, baby. Rinse and repeat. It took me a few tries, but I was locked in. Not even paying attention, I was in the zone. I was so locked in that I didn't even realize that the fight had finished. Let's go! Is it over? Yo! Really? It's over? It's over! Let's go! Let's go! I wasn't even counting! We are once again face to face with Ocelot. Here we go! And like the son of a great woman he is, tries to kill us once again. But it seems as though Liquid has taken over his body. Which I have to comment once again how cool and original of a way to bring back Liquid. I 100% approve of this. We are taken aboard Arsenal Gear when he confronts the AIs of the Patriots who reveal that they have been manipulating events to control information and maintaining global order. With the help of Snake and Otacon, we escape and face Solidus. Here we go. In a final battle atop Federal Hall. Can you picture it, ladies and gentlemen? Can you picture it? Now, this was not the hardest boss fight of the game, but it was so epic. One of my favorite fights just because I got to you, Raiden's Katana. I am a big action combat fan, and this fight hit home. The back and forth dialogue between Raiden and Solidus was memorable. The battle is is not just a physical confrontation though, but also a deeply emotional one. Raiden is facing off against Solidus Snake, who is revealed to be his adopted father. The personal stakes and Raiden's struggle with his own identity and past add significant weight to this fight. In this fight, it was all about timing Solidus Snake's attacks and blocking them, then waiting for your window to hit him. He goes into a rage mode and you have to avoid these quick attacks that he does as he runs around the boss Serena, but all my training had prepared me for this moment. And of course, I defeated him and showed him how a katana is used. Let's go! Jeez. Holy shit, dude. Jeez. God damn! Another snake bites the dust! Ah, he almost got me. He almost got me. 
And this might be an unpopular opinion, but I like this boss fight more than the liquid boss fight at the end of Metal Gear Solid 1. Raiden, at this moment, is left to contemplate his future. He ends up reuniting with his girlfriend, Rose, who reveals she is pregnant with their child, leading him to decide to reclaim his identity and future. While Snake and Otacon vow to continue their fight against the Patriots, setting up the events for future games in the series. I did not want this game to end. Why did it have to end? This is the best sequel to a game that I have played and for me it surpassed not only my expectations but the original game as well in my opinion. I do not know how Kojima managed to outdo himself after the first game but somehow he did. I think I am probably going to jump right into the third game after this. Not only because of how great the second one is but I hear the third one is an even bigger fan favorite than the first two games. I guess the only question question is, can the third game really top all of this? If you enjoyed the video, hit that like and subscribe button so you can be notified when I post new videos and when I go live. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one.